community to bring forth this unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we thank the Lord today for his mercy and his grace as we come forth with his gospel who he had given to a true man of God a true apostle sent by God with his revelation to free the world or as many as in the sound of our voice free you from sin the ministers were laboring today about the power of God how God can give you power to take you out of this world and out of sin and bondage and that's the good news, that's a good message today for the world. The scripture says that this is the purpose that Christ has come in the flesh. To destroy the works of the devil. And as we look in the word of God today, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, looking at the holiness and the righteousness of God. The word of God says here in verses 15, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. We're serving a holy God today, men and brethren. We're serving a powerful God today. But we want you to know, even as in these last days, the scripture says that the wage, the wages of sin is death. We want you to know God is still holy, even though he's going to bring judgment upon the adulterers. Even though he's going to bring judgment on the fornicators, homosexuals, lesbians, murderers, haters of God, we say God is still holy. Some things might happen in the world. And people might say, how come God could allow such a things to happen? We're saying God is a just God today. And what he wants you to know, he wants you to come out from sin. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. But we have an adversary, the devil, who is in man's flesh in these last days. Who is tricking men and putting up like a smoke screen, as it were? You can have all the money in the world, the women, the pleasures of this life. And you're not looking about eternal life. You're not so much worried about your soul today. And that's what we want to preach about today. That soul of man that God gave to every man. But because of the devil in man's 
flesh and man is in bondage to sin of their flesh the scripture says that the Lord sending his son his only begotten son and for sin had condemned sin in the flesh in other words when Christ had been hung on that cross and all that suffering and all that pain the scripture says he took away our sins but it's not like the false churches today Christ died for our sins and therefore we're free to sin you see that false doctrine the scripture is showing us that Christ died, even as you look in the book of St. John chapter 3. It says, for God so loved the world. But it never says that he loved the world in sin. He never said that he loved the world in adultery. Or fornication. Or homosexuality. Or whatever sin you're abiding in today. sin. This is what we're bringing forth to you today. And even though you're in bondage, or some might say, well, we're not in bondage. As the Jews had said to Christ, we was never in bondage to any man. So how could you preach freedom to us? Well, we're saying if you believe that every man was born in sin, that's a scripture that these false churches love to preach every Sunday. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Well, if you believe that, then you should know that all men who haven't come to this doctrine, to Christ, and Him crucified and born again by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is still in sin, then you know what we're talking about. You know you need to be free. You know you need to be delivered today. And we serve in a God that have the power. All you need to have today is faith in that God. You might say, I have faith in God. As a matter of fact, I'm going to my Pentecostal church tomorrow. I just come out to my seven days Adventist church today. Hallelujah. I know Jesus. But if the preacher is not preaching that sanctification from sin today, a life free from sin today, if he's not preaching one Lord, one faith, one baptism, we're saying that's a false denomination. It's a false doctrine. You know, we're sinners saved by grace. You know, we could sin a little. You see, the Lord, he know, men and brethren, that Satan was beating down men, kind, from the days even when Adam had sinned in the garden. And all men after Adam was born into that sin. When you're born of a woman, you can't just reject sin. You know, I'm free from sin. Oh, I don't have, you don't have power over sin and the devil. As long as you're born of a woman and come into this world, you're born into sin. You took on that seed of Adam. But we're preaching that deliverance today. That new Adam, Christ Jesus today, who can give you power to live free from sin. You see, the brethren is saying that the Lord wants you to believe that. Some people hear that and they might want to laugh us to scorn. What you talking about living free from sin? I never heard, heard such a madness, you might say. But that's not madness. We saying you in bondage to the devil, that's madness. Because the Lord came to free us from sin today, men and brethren. And we say, let's look at the word of God here. Let's look at verses 12. We're still here in 1 Peter. And unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things 
you don't have a say in the matter. Amen. Yes, I could love my neighbor. Yes, I love my wife. 30 years we've been married. Married. 50 years of marriage. But how many times you cheated on your wife? How many times you cheated on your husband? How many times you do evil to your neighbor? We say today, men and brethren, this power of God and his sanctification is teaching us to abstain from fornication. And not only fornication, all sin. And this is God's doctrine. This is his righteousness today, men and brethren. But we have to have faith. The scripture says, how could you have faith? Somebody need to preach faith onto you. And how can he preach if he wasn't sent by God? We say we believe this gospel is of God. We believe that we are of God. Because we teach and say, come out from sin today. Hear these words of these ministers. And have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Two more verses here. Verses 13. We're still in 1 Peter chapter 1. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind. The word of God is teaching the Christian man and woman that we have to labor to be strong in Christ and in his righteousness. So you who don't know nothing about Christ, you who want to continue going to the Baptist faith, want to continue going to the Pentecostal church tomorrow, we're saying you don't have no power against Satan and his uh, clutch that he has against Adam. But we preach in deliverance, but you can't find it in this false denomination. How do you know you hear the truth, men and brethren? This truth is going to set you free from sin, the Word of God said. Just think about this point. If every man and every woman today believe in Christ, we won't have no need for the army, for police officers, I mean, it would just be a world of righteousness. And this is what God had planned from the foundation of the world. But let's come back to reality. Man is still in sin. And the Lord, he's going to destroy the works of the devil. He is going to destroy mankind, womankind, whoever abides and want to continue in that sin today. We say the good news today, there is power. There is salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ today, men and brethren. And we're declaring this gospel unto you that we have received from a true man of God. So if we tell telling you that God is going to destroy men in this world of sin. Then how can I be free? How can I escape damnation? How can I escape the destruction of God that he's going to put against this world? The scriptures teaches us that the Lord, he has no desire that any man should perish. But that all men should come to repentance today. And that's what we're preaching. In the meanwhile, you have the sun rising from the east. And everything seems to be going well. The scripture says, in the day you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. Because there's going to be a time. When you want to hear God's word and you won't be able to hear it, the scripture teaches us. That's why we're going to take advantage of this time we have today. Because we're not ashamed to preach.
preach this gospel today. On your street corners, say come and have fellowship with us. Because our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. But if you want to continue in your pride, if you love your sin more than you love God, you're going to be destroyed today, men and brethren. And in the sound of our voice, if you hear God's word, you can't tell God, I never heard. I never knew. No one never preached it to me. That's what we're doing right now in your midst today, men and brethren. And say, come and ask a question. Find out from these ministers about your state. Your spiritual state, your soul, not so much your flesh. How it might look, you might take your playboy. I could have all the women, you know. Or this woman, you might think, I'm so beautiful. I could, you know, get any man I want. We saying your soul today, that only God could destroy your body and your soul in hell and a lake of fire. Amen, brother. We call forth another minister. Amen. Amen. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the righteousness and the faith that He has delivered unto the true people of God. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the fact that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, a man approved of God through many signs and wonders and miracles done to you. He died for our sins, brothers and sisters. He died for our sins so that we don't have to feel the judgment of death, hell, and the lake of fire. I'm telling you, if you look at the world today, a lot of you, you're planning on a lot of things that may not even happen. Many of you, you're planning for your retirement. You're working hard, putting money in stocks, in bonds, in your 401k. You can't wait to the day that you can retire and stop working and live a joyous and prosperous life. Many of you are putting money in the way to send your children to college so that they can get an education and the wisdom of this world so they can get a good job. Many of you, you're planning your wedding. The man that you've been committing fornication with finally proposed and now you're getting married. And you got your bridesmaids and your groomsmen. You're picking out your wedding dress. You're picking out your flowers. Many of you are planning for your vacation. You've been working so hard, you just can't wait to push that clock and take that trip to Jamaica or take that trip to the Keys. I'm telling you, many brethren, you're planning on a lot of things in the world that may not even happen. But one thing, you are not planning that will happen is where you're going to spend your eternity. You're not planning on your death and where you're going to spend that death. Whether it's in hell, in the lake of fire that the Lord has prepared for all the sinners, for all those who won't repent, for all those that continue in their evil ways, or whether or not you're going to spend an eternity with life and truth and happiness in the kingdom of heaven and of God. I'm telling you, men and brethren, the scripture says, it is appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. You only get one turn at that in this lifetime. You only get one turn to make yourself right with God. You only get one try to make sure that you are right with God. Jesus is commanding you to repent of your sins. I'm telling you, men and brethren, 
We came out today not to declare the God of the Baptist. We came out today not to declare the God of the Catholics. We are not preaching the Jehovah Witness God today. We're not talking about a God who can't save. Someone who's so weak, he can't keep his members from sin and corruption. We're not preaching about a God like the Catholics whose priests are so defiled that they're committing abominations with the young boys in the congregation. That's not the God we came to declare unto you today. We came to let you know that there is possible in the name of Jesus Christ to hear the truth and let that truth set you free from each and every one of your sins. I'm telling you, many brethren, a lot of you say, I already go to a church. I'm already a member of this temple. I go to this synagogue. I know God. Let me ask you, if what your church is preaching, if what they believe, has it set you free from your sins? Because the word of God says, only the truth can do that. You see, the gospel that the Presbyterians is preaching can't set you free from your sins. The gospel of the Jehovah Witness, of the Pentecostalists, of the Seventh-day Adventists, that gospel can't set you free from your sins. Why? Because God did not send those churches. God does not send those men to establish a brick building and call themselves the church of God. I hear always a brother. He's testifying unto you that you will not find any of these churches in the Bible. He always challenged you to let you know you ain't going to find Baptist church in the Bible. You won't find a Catholic church in the Bible. A Presbyterian, a Jehovah Witness church, you will not find it in the Bible. But you will find us, Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of God's truth. We're here on the earth today declaring God's righteousness so that you might make an intelligent decision on where you're going to spend your eternity. I'm telling you, each and every time you commit sin, the Word of God says in Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11 through 13, every time you commit sin, God is angry with you. You become God's enemy. Why? Because He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. Not for you to continue in sin, but that you are to repent of your sins, turn from all of your wickedness, and seek God while He may be found, and call upon Him while He is near. I'm telling you, many brethren, Scripture says that the wages of sin is death. And that's what we're preaching against. We're not preaching tithes. We're not preaching offerings. We're not preaching speaking in tongues. We're not preaching none of that foolishness that you hear in these false churches. We're preaching against sin. We're preaching against the works of the flesh so that you might turn from all your sins and seek God while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. We tell you, men and brethren, there is no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. Jesus Christ knows no such creature. God, he didn't create a sinner saved by some miraculous grace. God created man in his own image and man defiled that image by committing sin in the Garden of Eden. Now God has sent the Son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile you back unto Him through faith and through righteousness, not through sin. We're telling you, you got a choice to make today. The Word of God says in the book of Hebrews, the day you hear His voice, don't harden your heart. In the last day, you ain't going to be able to tell God, I didn't know. Well, I didn't know all those men over on that corner were really preaching your word. You know, I just thought there was a cold. I just thought that uh, they had nothing better to do on Saturday. I'm telling you, you're not going to have no excuse. 
in the day of judgment, when you hear this word from these true brethren, from true men of God, and you reject it. We're preaching against sin. We're telling you, you have sex with a man that's not your husband, that's fornication, and you're going to die in your sins unless you repent. We're telling you, you divorce your wife and married again, and she's still alive, that's adultery, and you're going to die in your sins unless you repent. We're telling you, there ain't no such thing as you can hate your neighbor and still love God. You're going to die in your sins unless you repent. We're preaching against sin, men and brethren. We're telling you to turn from all of your sins. Turn from all your wickedness. Turn to the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, men and brethren. We are Church of the Living God. And our purpose here today is to come and we're searching for the lost sheep of God. As our previous ministers were preaching, they were all showing and giving you different examples to show you what it truly means to be a Christian. We're living in a world today where everybody has a notion or they have that belief that they're all saved, that they're all going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. But we're here to show you, open up your eyes. We're not here to sugarcoat or water down the word of God. But we read it plainly as it is written in the King. James version of the Bible. One scripture says in Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. A lot of people, they go to church and their minister today is preaching peace, peace to their sins. Their preachers are prophesying as the scripture in the Old Testament brings out. Prophesying smooth things. Telling them what you want to hear. Telling them and making it seem like God is a needy God. That God is a sugar, sugar daddy God. But we're saying be not deceived. One scripture says that God is angry with the sinner every day another scripture says that even your prayers your offerings and sacrifices to God it's an abomination in his sight it's an abomination though he said that it's like something that stinks in his nose today what we're trying to show you men and brethren the problem is because of sin Scripture says how men, they love their sin and they drink it down like water. We're saying today, men and brethren, that with Christ, there's no sin in Christ Jesus, men and brethren. But we heard the Lord saying, Him that will name the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. And we're not just speaking words, men and brethren. But we're saying that Christ didn't only give that commandment, but he gave you the power to fulfill it also. There's no more, no such thing as, as it were, don't commit fornication or don't commit adultery. And you don't find no power or grace to do it like under the law. But the scripture says, men and brethren, that we're no longer under the law but under the grace of God. And what is the grace of God? Is the grace of God favor from God just for you to continue for in your sin? We're saying no, men and brethren. Read the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God. 
forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Bitter brother, we're saying today that the grace of God is not for you to continue in sin, but the grace of God is power and grace from God to overcome the sin, men and brethren. And the scripture says that if you're supposed to be dead to that sin, it says how are you going to continue therein any longer? We're saying if Christ has truly cleansed you from your sin, and he said, one scripture says that once you've been cleansed, you shall go back to those dead works. As the scripture says further on in the chapter, let's keep reading. It says, know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall also walk in the newness of life. Men and brother, what are we reading? We like to, as it were, give you some understanding of the word of God, which was imparted unto us by a true man of God. Men and brethren, this baptism that we're reading about right now is not what the Baptists believe. You sin all throughout the week, or one day you come and you confess your faults and be baptized, and you feel that momentary, that temporary relief of that condemnation. And then, right after you leave the service, you got to get your cigarette. You got to drink. You in the church trying to pick up some girl's phone number. Or you lusting after another man's wife or another woman's husband. No, we're not talking about that kind of, as it were, baptism. That false baptism. But the baptism we're talking about is the baptism of Jesus Christ. You see, when Christ came into the world, he came into this world and saw how sinful men were. If you read in the book of Isaiah chapter 59, it describes the state of men, the devastation that Satan has caused and wreaked in this world. And God looking at the state of men and the Lord, God Almighty, having compassion on us. The Lord said that he came into this world and his arm brought forth this salvation. Jesus Christ came into flesh and blood, men and brethren, to give us this power to live a life free of sin. The book of St. John chapter 3, the Lord was revealing that mystery of his baptism. He was speaking to the Pharisee Nicodemus and he was telling him to be born again. And men and brethren, when you read the scriptures, you can't look at the scriptures for face value. You can't sit down alone in your house and try to read the scriptures and think you'll be saved. But you have to have someone to show you what the word of God truly means. In other words, men and brethren, God has to send that person today. A lot of times in this world, you have self-raised up pastors and of bishops and teachers but we're saying who raised them up the lord said many have run and calling themselves of god but the lord said he never sent them so if the lord didn't send them how can they preach his word unto you we're saying men and brethren have some understanding we're here today for your salvation today laboring to try to save your soul we're going back to that point about that baptism. The baptism of Jesus Christ. The Lord. It will signify how the Lord, He came into flesh and blood. And how He took on the sin of the world. And He died, men and brethren. And then, He didn't just die, but He rose a grim. I hear one scripture saying, for our justification. Now, men and brethren, 
The Lord isn't asking us to die physically, but He wants you to die to your own flesh, men and brethren. And what does it mean to die to your flesh? We're saying, men and brethren, if any man will come after Christ, he must deny himself and pick up his cross. We're saying, men and brethren, that you got to die to that sinful nature of the flesh. We're saying, men and brethren, you got to labor to have faith in God. And once you have in that faith in God, like a grain of a mustard seed, the Lord, He can look at that and He can start, as it were, administering His grace unto you. Where He gives you power. That word, you have to say, can keep overcoming you. But we're saying the true power of God, it overcomes sin, men and brethren. This was the example that Christ came and manifest in the flesh. He was a man, just like I'm a man, just like you. But the difference is, men and brethren, Christ, he didn't bow his knee to sin. Christ, he came leaving us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. If you call it yourself by the name of Christ, understand what you're saying. What does it mean to be a Christian? A Christian is supposed to be Christ-like men and brethren. What was the example of Christ? The scripture says that there was no sin found in him. There was no God found in his mouth. And when he was reviled, he didn't revile back again. The Lord, he came and set forth that example. A blameless report in this world, men and brethren. Satan has no power over the true Son of God. I want to say today, men and brethren, that that same God that was walking on the earth, that same power that he had. The scripture says in St. John chapter 1, men and brethren, that as to many that believed on God, to him gave he power, that same power that he had to become the sons of God. But we're saying again, men and brethren, what does it truly mean to believe in God? Believing in God, men and brethren, is not just a word you say. But when you truly believe God, the scripture says that the Spirit of God is supposed to be manifest in the Son. I hear in the book of James, where it talks about that faith with works. James chapter 2. It says, What doth it profit, my brother, though a man say he had faith and have not works? Can faith save him? We're saying, men and brethren, that there's a work that you have to be doing in your body. One scripture in Romans, it speaks about how the flesh, they want to testify of how holy God is up in heaven, or how holy God is over there, or how holy God is over there. But we're saying today that the Word of God is supposed to be in you. We're saying Jesus Christ is supposed to be in you, men and brethren. This is what it truly means to be a Christian. This is where that faith with works come in. Because if you sin, that you love God, that you keep His, that means you got to keep His commandments also. A lot of men, they talk about keeping God's commandments. They're thinking about the law. What we're saying today, we're not preaching about the law, men and brethren. This is a new dispensation of grace. The law has established this new covenant. The law, it only tell you or give you a knowledge of God's righteousness. But what the law lacked is that it didn't give you the power to do so. This is the fault that was with the law. And as long as you labor and try to keep the law, you're always going to find yourself under that yoke of sin. Paul brings it out in Romans chapter 7. The good that I want, that I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. 
But we're saying today, this is why we God came and manifest His new plan of salvation. This new power, this grace that you can find in these last days. But we're saying today, men and brethren, that how many of you have a desire to truly follow after God? How many of you have a desire to truly be cleansed from your sin? And not with backsliding, men and brethren. We don't preach a Christ that allows you to backslide every now and then. Or don't practice sin. No. But we're saying today, the book of 1 John chapter 3, it says that whosoever is born of God can't sin. Because the seed of God, the spirit of God is in him. This is what, is what it means to truly be a Christian man and brother. We're saying, men and, today, men and brethren, today as the word of God is going forth, we're saying don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Don't let Satan preoccupy, preoccupy your mind or cloud your thoughts as we heard our previous minister saying, well, what we're going to do today, how am I going to run after my life in this world today. How am I going to fulfill the lust of my flesh today? We're saying, as the word of God going forth, labor to be attentive because this word of God, it has the power to save your soul. Amen? Amen? Like to call forth another minister today? Amen. Where's the neighborhood today? To preach to you the true and unadulterated word of God for your life in these last days. We're saying there are many false denominations in the world. You have the Baptist faith, the Catholic, Jehovah Witness. You have a lot of different denominations. But we're saying there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all. The scripture, we're saying we're of church of the living God. The scripture says how we're that pillar in the ground of the truth. The scripture doesn't say that the Baptist church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. The scripture doesn't say that the Catholic church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. It doesn't say that Jehovah Witness faith is the pillar and the ground of the truth. But it says that the church of the living God is the pillar and the ground of the truth. The scripture says that there's only one Lord, one faith and one baptism. We're saying that we also hear that today as the previous ministers were speaking to you, we're here to tell you that it is possible to live a life free from all sin and unrighteousness in these last days. This is the dispensation of grace. The scripture says to as many as believe on him, to him he's given that same power to become the sons of God. Power to abstain from all of worldly lusts all them works of fornication and adultery. The Lord can give one power today to stop masturbating. He can give one power to stop molesting them little boys in the Catholic Church. He can give one power today to be faithful to one wife in these last days. And we're saying, men and brethren, you need a true man of God to show you this true revelation of Jesus Christ, to show one this mystery that has been hidden from ages and generations, but has been revealed to us in these last days, those that truly believe and have faith in these last days. You can't have a woman preacher in your church trying to show you the mystery of Jesus Christ. You can't have a woman preacher in your church trying to show you God's true plan in your life. You need a true man of God in these last days. The scripture tells me, let women keep silence in those churches. We're saying you have all these churches church without walls. We say you need to get some walls in your church. We're saying there's only one true apostle that can show you the true plan of God for your life in these last days. And men and brother, we're saying today that God hates sin. God hates adultery and fornication. The scripture says in Psalms chapter 73 verse 20, as a dream when one awaketh, so O Lord, he despised that image of sin. Each and every day, God hates sin, brother. He hates that spirit of fornication. 
That boyfriend and girlfriend spirit. God hates that. He hates that Jezebel spirit that can't keep no clothes on their flesh. He hates that proud spirit, brother. We're saying God hates sin, brother, because sin is not his image. In this, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil in these last days. We're saying if you're still in sin, you're still under the law, brother. We're saying, Lord, he came down to deliver us from sin. This grace, brother, in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it speaks about what this grace does, what it's going to be teaching. This grace of God, this true grace of God is bringing salvation, brother. It's bringing help. This grace is help and it's power from God to live a life free from sin. The scripture says how this grace is going to be teaching one how to deny all ungodliness and worldly lusts and how you should be living soberly and righteously in this present world, not in the future or whenever you feel like it. The scripture says in this present world, we're saying there is power in these last days to live godly just like the Lord is. The Lord is holy, holy, holy. And he want us to be holy even as he's holy. We're saying, brother, if you're still in sin, you're still under the law. And that's why you still can't do the things that you would. You would know to do the good, but you can't find that power to do it. But you're saying, if you come have fellowship with the true body of Jesus Christ, with us, Church of the Living God, we have true ministers, a true man of God that can show on how to do that in these last days. If you're still in sin, brother, and that's why you still can be finding yourself molesting them little kids in church because you're still under the law. You can still find yourself in fornication, can't have a sex outside of marriage. The Lord doesn't like that neither. The scripture says marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, the scripture says, God will judge in these last days, brother. At this time, we have to bring forth another minister in Jesus' name. Amen, men and brethren. Hear the word of the Lord today. We are a church of the living God. I heard the minister before me saying the scripture says that's the only church that God has established in these last days. And he said it's the pillar and ground of the truth. We're out here in your corner, men and brethren, a lot of you might say, oh no, that's those people again. They gonna keep preaching about Jesus. Why don't they take that back into their church? We're not out here because we don't have a building, men and brethren. We're not out here to collect any type of money. But we're out here for the saving of your soul. Jesus said, go out and preach to the world, commanding men women and children that they repent of their sins and that's why we're out here men and brethren commanding you that you need to repent of your sins today i heard the ministers before me saying that god hates sin we're saying today that hebrews said jesus is the same yesterday today and forever we're saying today, men and brethren, that God, He never changed. He never loved sin, men and brethren. The scripture says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, that the will of God was for man to be in His image. We all know that the image of God is holy, holy, holy. We're saying today that God wanted man to live holy and righteous today in this present world. But men, because they love evil, they love that darkness. St. John chapter 3 says, they rather that darkness than light. They, be, they, thank you Jesus, created their own image today. We're saying today, Adam was not in God's image. Because the image of God don't commit sin. We're saying today that true Christians, they live a life free from sin. Some of you might see the signs and it says there's no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. We're saying we want you to think about what a sinner saved by grace mean. How can you be saved by sin, saved by grace, when grace is the very thing to keep you from 
I'm saying? We're saying God was manifest, men and brethren, to destroy the works of the devil. God was manifest to mirror that image that God was talking about in Genesis chapter 1. That was the true Adam, men and brethren. God was preaching prophecy when he said, let us make man in our own image. We're seeing today that God wanted man to have dominion over the works of his hands. He wanted him to have dominion over the works of the earth. We're seeing today that men, they still bow by the devil. they still bound by sin. You might say, how am I bound? I'm black and I'm not a slave. But we're saying today if you're still in sin, you're bound by sin. St. John chapter 8 said, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. We're saying today that Adam and men in this world, they're not living in God's image because they're still bound by the works of the flesh. They see the true image of God. He's free. Everything is under his feet today. You look at this corner, you see a lot of men. We're saying they're living testimonies, living witnesses. You see young and old today, there is witnesses in the earth today that it is possible to live a life free from sin. Some of you say that's impossible. How are you going to live a life free from sin? When sin is everywhere. When sin, you was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But that's why you got to be born again, I heard one minister say. That's why Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. See, if you're not born of this new image, uh, that's the image of God. Uh, you're going to always be in sin, men and brethren. The Lord said, when I come back, shall I find faith? We're saying today, why does it take faith for you to be in sin? When you was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, you don't need no faith to stay in your sins. But the faith of God is for you to come out of your sin today. We want you to repent and turn from your sin today. See, it takes faith. You have to love righteousness. You got to hate the devil today. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? We're saying today, if you in the Baptist religion, that's why you never heard of a life free from sin. They don't preach it. They don't know it. Because it haven't been revealed to the Baptists. God didn't establish the Baptist church. If you are a Catholic today, you don't know about a life free from sin because God didn't establish the Catholic church. You might say, wow, minister, you're saying some bold words. But we're saying we're coming boldly. The scripture says the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We're saying today, that's why Church of the Living God is the truth. Because John chapter 8 said, if we you know the truth, that truth is going to set you free. Free from your sins today. A lot of you say, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But we're saying today, if you're saved and you're still in sins, then what was you saved from? God didn't come to save you in your sins, men and brethren. He came to save you from your sins. We're saying today, that's why the life of Christ was manifest, that God was in the flesh. I heard one minister said, just like we did, he was tempted just like we are, but he did no sin today. And we're saying by the grace of God that true Christians can now live in that image that God wanted. That image in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that has dominion over all the works of his hands. You see, the Catholic Church, they don't have dominion. You see, there's a lot of members that's still in sin. A lot of members.
members that's doing things that's not godly. We're saying the church is the body of Christ. The church is the members of God's body. It's not just a building, men and brethren. And we're saying if you're calling yourself a church, you're supposed to be living holy because there's no sin in God. But some of these churches, they allow boyfriend and girlfriends. Sisters in the choir, pregnant, don't know who's the husbands. Men and women having children outside of wedlock. That's not the body of Christ. Christ said, I'm not the author of confusion. We're saying today, if you're still in sin, if you're going to a church that allows sin, we're saying that church is of the devil. You might say, whoa, that's a mouthful. Are you trying to say all the million of Baptists are of the devil? We're saying judge by the scriptures. The scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. We're saying today, we want you to try the spirit today. These ministers here, you're going to hear a lifetime testimony about how it's possible to live a life free from sin. We're saying don't even just believe us. Try the spirits. You go to this Methodist church and you got women speakers. When Jesus said, let your women keep silent. How can that be a church of God when they're in rebellion to God's word? We're saying today, the Lord said, those that call on him shall be saved. The world, they close their Bible and they call on Jesus. But it don't stop like that, man, brother. And how shall you hear except there be a preacher? Someone got to expel this gospel to you, men and brethren. Somebody got to teach you this gospel. A lot of these churches, men open up their Bible and they establish a cult. Men open up their Bible and they establish churches, but God didn't send them. The Lord said, I didn't send them, yet they ran. Because the Lord said, if I sent them, they will be turning the people from their sins. And that's why we're out here today. Truly, the Lord sent us. Because we commanding you, you need to repent. You won't be saved in sin. That's a lie of the false prophet. Some of, my, some of you might say, well, I heard that from my youth. You're trying to tell me the whole world is lying. We're saying yes. Just because the whole world loves sin, that don't make it right. We're saying true ministers of God, they're not going to try to please your flesh. Paul said if I tried to be men pleasers, I couldn't be a servant of God. A true man of God today is going to tell you the truth that no, you can't divorce your wife and marry again and be all right with God. That's adultery. A true man of God going to tell you you got to come out that adultery. We're not going to lie to you, men and brethren. We don't sugarcoat the word of God. See, a lot of men, a lot of false prophets, they add sugar and water to the word of God to make it sweet because they want their church so big. A lot of false prophets have made a money enterprise off the word of God. But see, we're not worried about your money today. we worried about your soul. My friends, we don't want you to be deceived. We're saying that's why God was manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. If it was that easy just to say the sinner's prayer, then why did God come and die? God is not foolish. If it, all you had to do was say, Lord, save me, then why did Christ come and be manifest? Man and brother, we want you to think today. It's not as easy as a false prophet want to make it. The scripture says, strive to enter into God's kingdom. It's not going to be no hop skipping to the kingdom of God. You're going to have to strive against sin. You're going to have to 
to fight in war against the gainsayers and false prophets. And that's why we are here today to dispel the lie of the false prophet. Some of you might be angry, but God told us to preach the truth. Don't be angry at God's ministers. We're saying if this word, you hear this word, the scripture says, don't harden your heart. We're saying today that God wants you to circumcise your heart today. Cut off the works of the flesh today. Cut off sin and unrighteousness today. Come and find fellowship with the true church of God. If you got desire to find righteousness, these are the true ministers of God. Take advantage of this opportunity. We invite you to come over. Test the waters. Ask your questions. And these true men of ministers of God are really ready and able. We're not going to tell you some folk story. But we're going to tell you a living witness. I'm saying you see these young men. They live a life free from sin. They, they don't have girlfriends. They don't have girlfriends. We're saying only in the true church of God is this type of doctrine being preached. That young men can use their strength for the truth. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That you don't have to be bound by the devil. Women don't have to sin no more. You don't have to dress lewd like a prostitute and try to catch men anymore. Men, you don't have to be bound by the strip clubs anymore. You can go home to your wife. Be faithful to one wife today. That's the good news. But see, that's not good to the flesh. The flesh love peace and safety to your sins. The flesh love all you got to do is pay your tithes. And you're going to make it. That's a lie. You can't pay your way into the kingdom. God said if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. If I was thirsty, I didn't need your water. We're saying today, God don't need your money, brother. That's that greedy false prophet. He wants your money. God wants your soul. Sacrifice and offerings. Thou what is not but a body. Thou hast prepared for me. We're saying God wants you to live holy in your body today. That's what God wants. All these sacrifices. Mother Teresa sleeping on the floor. That might be a good work. Feeding the poor. But if you're still in sin, God is angry with the sinner every day. If you're still in sin, God is still angry. We're saying today, come and have fellowship with us. Because truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, I'm brought in. We truly thank God today. We bless His name for all that He has done for us. Because if we don't have that grace, we couldn't have that access to stand before you today. That's why we're now using the words like to make you happy to make you feel good in your flesh. That's why we really appreciate that the Lord did for us in this last day. To be a member in God's body is not something come from your power, but come from the, that your flesh that you know in your flesh. But you have to be humble to find God, to find God grace. In this last day, as the preview preacher was saying, if you hear God's word today, harden not your heart. Because the flesh always think they wise, they know better, they know much, or they don't need that grace. But as the last day, if you don't use that grace, it might be too late if you die today, because you don't really know when exactly the time Christ might come. But today, if you hear this word, receive them, you might be blessed. Not blessed in your flesh to have a lot of money, a lot of stuff to please your flesh. I mean, you might be blessed to do God's will. That's why the previous preacher was saying, God hates sin. If you know, if you really know who God is, you not, you can't continue to live in your sin. You can't continue to abide in your sin. That's why the previous preacher was saying, you have to be, you have to be born in, in God, in Jesus Christ. If you're born in God, you can't continue in sin. 
because the Lord himself hates sin. If you are the son of God, you gonna will you will you will really know what you have to do to please God. And you can't use your flesh to please God. You have to use God's spirit to walk in humility, to be humble, to follow all the good example through Jesus Christ. And you might be one of the son of God. Because a lot of people are always saying, if you anybody who born into Islam or anybody, they are the son of God because the Lord created them. But you are not the son of God if you don't do God's will. If you still in sin, you are not the son of God. But they're going to say, who created me? The Lord created you. You're just a, cre a creature, but you're not the son of God. When you know you are the son of God, you are doing God's will. You humble yourself. You follow Jesus Christ step by step. You hate sin. You are the son of God because God himself hates sin. And this last day is not easy to do God's will in your flesh. Because a lot of stuff, the demon used them to deceive you and your flesh. If you're still in your flesh, the demon going to deceive you. But if you, let, if you let the Lord use you, if, the Lord, if you praise the Lord in your heart, in your life, in your body, you do God's will in your body, the Lord going to keep you from sin. Because a lot of people say, yes, I, I am saying or saved by grace. Jesus come to save you, may not, not keep you from your sin, and then you keep continuing the sin, and you're waiting for that grace again and again. It's once Jesus died in the cross, and that's it for all sin. But if he died a second time, if he's not coming die, he's not coming back to die a second time, that's why you can't save in your sin. You forgive your sin. If you if you receive his grace, he's gonna forgive you and forever. But you're not find that grace and continue the sin and then forgive you got forgiveness and continue it again and again in your sin. In this last day, a lot of first preach first preacher, they come in in God's name. But the Lord don't send them because they come just to make you happy in your sin, to make you comfortable in your sin. But Jesus come exactly in this last day to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy works of sin. If you're in Christ, you truly believe in Christ, you can't continue in, in sin, live in sin. Because the sin gonna bring you straight to the hell. But if you believe in God, the Lord gonna preserve you, gonna save you from your sin. And this last day, you're young. You're going to feel how good it, it is for you to do all that your heart, your, I mean, the desire of your heart, to do everything you want in your flesh, to go everywhere you want. But what we can tell you, if you ain't God, you can't do anything the way you want it according to your flesh. Because if, there, if, if you become one of God, you're born in God, the Lord going to control your body. You're going to do things according to God's, God's will. But if you feel it's good, it's good for you to do, to do things according to your flesh, you're not the son of God. You're not from God. And then the God, the God know you. If you are the son of God, he already know you. And he's he going to give you more grace to continue in the, in the righteousness. And this last day, a lot of things going on. Some, the people, the, I mean, the flesh don't really understand what's going on. They don't, you don't know exactly what, I mean, the time when Christ comes. You don't know exactly the time. But if you believe in God, the Lord is going to give you grace to continue and then to continue in the righteousness, to humble, to walk in the perfection, and walk in, in a, like a life free from sin. Because how you can live a life free from sin and you're already in your flesh? You have to be born of God and if you want to live a life free, of sin, free from sin. But the Lord can give you that power, but you have to believe first. You have to get the true church of God. We are the church of the living God. By the grace of God, we believe. We're not going to tell you something we're not doing. By the grace of God, we believe according to that grace the Lord gives us. And then if you follow those words, you're not going to be ashamed. Because sin brings you straight, like I can say, like to, to shame. But if the Lord came to you, you're not going to be ashamed. Because He gives you grace to understand exactly, to open your eyes, to know what means God's will. Because the flesh can't please God. Because how the preacher, pre I mean, the previous preacher was saying, the, se the first Adam came in the flesh. He came to show you how to please your flesh. But Jesus come and has a second Adam to save you from the flesh, to crucify your flesh. Because the second Adam don't know how to crucif crucif crucify the, the flesh. But Jesus come to show you that. That's why the Lord manifests in the flesh. 
it came exactly in your body, same body with you, the way you are, the way you look, the way, I mean, we can say flesh and blood. And then it came exactly to show you how you can live a life free from sin. How you can do God's will in this body. You can't do God's will while you're doing the flesh will. Because they, they, they contrary, they can't work together. You have to be in God or you in flesh. You have to be in the spirit or you in and the kind only thing in this world. But if you believe in God, you can't do God's will. You're not the son of God. Because some people say, yes, I believe. But you don't prove the works. You don't prove nothing. We we'll show you what you believe. You say, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a the son of God. But what your works, your, your, I mean, your actions show you you're not the son of God. Because the son of God walk in the light. He don't, do, he don't walk in the darkness. If you're still in sin, you're still in fornication, adultery. You're still lost after your neighbor, neighbor wife. You're not the son of God. Because the Lord not going to let you do those things. I mean, we can tell you today, man and brother, Jesus come exactly to save you. He's not coming to show you, like, you, how, you, how it's good for you to live in your flesh. And, okay, I can support you. I mean, no problem with that. The Lord have a lot of problem with sinners. If your pastor say, the Lord don't have problem with sins, he is a liar. The Lord not saying him. If your pastor say, man, it's not a problem. You can have a girlfriend, too many, so many girlfriends you want. It's not, a, he's not, he not the Lord not saying him. Because he's going to sin, he's going to tell you, he's going to teach you how to crucify your flesh. And Paul saying to a woman, you have to offer your body as a living sacrifice. That you, 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 might be, you might know how to please God. If you not offer your body as a living sacrifice, even you walk in this body, you're not working according to your flesh. You know, if, because the Lord gives you grace to understand exactly. He gives you knowledge. You open your heart. When we say knowledge, it's not knowledge according to the world or according that you, I mean, they teach you at school. We're talking about the God's word. The God's word. Because that, that's, it's a, we can say, that's a life. In God, you find life. In His words, we, you find life. But if you earn your flesh, you're not going to receive those words. As the preacher, I mean, the preview preacher was saying, they put the Bible on the side and then they just use the, the, I mean, some sweet words, you know, to deceive you because they need so many people in, in the church, you know, to get a lot of money, you know, to get a, a lot of, how to say, tithes, you know, offering, you know, they need a lot of stuff. And then to get a, build, got a cost you a big build, building to have a lot of people with them, but the Lord don't know him. I mean, the Lord not going to know you either. But Jesus came to show you he got one faith, one baptism, one church, two church of God. We come today, if you want, I mean, how the brother was saying, if you want to know much about us, you can come ask us questions, you know. You can talk to us and you might know much, more, much, much better about exactly the true church of God. Because the church of, church of God, they don't believe in sin. The young and our church by the grace of God, we don't believe in fornication. You know, when you say fornication, you're not married, but you have girlfriend. You live in sex and do anything you want in your flesh. You're not from God. In our church by the grace of God, we don't believe in that. We believe in marriage. We don't believe in same-sex marriage because the Lord not call us for that. That's why the Lord created men and women. You know, He not created like men and men, girl and girl. He not created that. The Lord hate those things. The Lord, if you continue to do it, you're going to make the Lord mad. And then he might come. I mean, he's going to come destroy this world. That's why he tried to see if you can still, you know, reject th those things. Because the demon exactly stay right in face to face with you to make you, I mean, to hard, make your heart not receive those words, you know. Make you feel, oh man, that's better for me to do this or do that. But the Lord said, no, it's not good for you. Because that, those things going to make you exactly lose your salvation. But Jesus brings salvation, but for those who believe, we believe by the grace of God in a life free from sin. We believe in perfection. We believe how to do God's will in our body since we are young. It's not we say, oh man, I'm too young. I don't have time for that. If you're too young, you don't have time for that. You're going to really, really regret that. Because it's at this time, the Lord can bless you more. When you owe, oh, we got more, I mean, understanding, you know. You got more knowledge about God. I mean, how about God, how God is holy, how God is perfect, how God is, I mean, can sanctify your life, how we can, can say it, he got power to do anything. But if you want to use your power to do your, your stuff, 
you're gonna regret in this last day. We truly thank God in this last day. We are young, you know, we, but we believe by the grace of God. And the Lord give us a lot of grace to tell you today, if you're still in your sin, you're gonna regret. If you're still in your sin, you're not gonna make it, you know. If you're still in your sin, wherever church you are, if you, your pastor don't tell you, sin or can't save, if you're in sin, you can't have eternal life, you know. They always tell you, yeah, at the end, I can't, I mean, I can't say, I'm, I mean, I can't repent when I get a chance, you know. Before I die, I say, God, forgive me all that we did, or I, I, have, I have done. I can tell you today, if you're not born in the water, in the Spirit of God, you know, if you die, you're not going to go in, 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 in heaven. You're not going to have salvation, you know. You can't be saved. If you don't born, I mean, die in your sin, you're going to go in hell. Because the Lord, he may give you a choice, you know. You got a choice. If you have a, you can choose God or you choose your flesh. If you choose your flesh, you choose Satan. If you choose your flesh, you choose die. You're going to die in your sin. If you choose God, even you die, you got hope salvation. You got hope eternal life. Because the Lord is going to give your soul another, I mean, I'm going to say another life. You're going to get, give you another new body because you are born of God. That's why you have to be born again. You have to be like a little child because a little child is not going to fight. If you're still fighting with each other, if you're still fighting with your neighbor, you're not from God, wherever church you are. Because Jesus came, you see how they hate Christ, but he never say nothing. He never fight. Jesus really an example for everybody that's why in this last day jesus called you for, to come out from your sin you know you're gonna say man i don't do that much you know you get a, some kind of measure you say oh i got that much in my you know i do this i, I don't do that much about that but anything you do the lord you're not i'm not in your flesh you don't please god you we can say you're not the son of god the lord don't put our, our pleasure in your offering People say, okay, every Sunday I can go to my church. I bring, I mean, how to say, tithe or offering. You know, I give my pastor so much money. He want, you know, to do this. The Lord going to forgive me. And the next day, I go on my, on my fornication. Next day, I go on my adultery. Next day, I'm lying. Next day, I'm fighting. Next day, I'm cursing. If you even one word curse from your mouth, the Lord don't know you. Because the Lord don't curse ever. Because Holy Spirit and somebody... He's not gonna curse his neighbor, you know. He's not gonna use because any curse word from Satan, anything you use, anything you do, the Lord don't please. You're not pleasing God or to hate your neighbor. The Lord don't have pleasure in that. Many brother, it's not only us who have to say something, but we can tell you today, if you hear those words, harden not your heart, because the Lord come. I mean, the Lord have patience, you know, to wait to see when you're gonna come out from your sin. That's why Jesus, they say, oh, how long they been saying say that or this about Jesus Christ? He coming soon. Yes, he coming. But he have patience, you know. He wait to see if he can have some more, you know, to save some more. Because Satan take all entire world by himself to deceive people. He create a lot of activity, you know, to deceive you, to make you enjoy your life in the flesh. But if you enjoy your life today in your flesh, you can't be saved. You can't have eternal life. You have to enjoy your life in Christ. Because there, there is salvation. There, there is joy. But if you suffer today with Christ, you're going to have eternal life soon. But if you really, you can't suffer, you know, you don't want to suffer in, the, in your body. And then you can't, you're not going to be able to resist this world. Because you have to be suffer first and then to please God. We ask you come fellowship with us and then the Lord might I mean, my find some little spot little, little place your little place in you and then he might give you grace and he might forgive you and then not come in and your sin again amen lord jesus christ we thank the lord for the word of god being spoken unto you today at your bus stop today telling you about god's true plan of salvation for you and your lives and we pray men and brethren that today if you hear the voice of the lord amen. don't harden your heart amen. Because a lot of people are deceived today. And the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 24, Take heed that no man deceive you. Because many false prophets are going out into the world today. And they're deceiving many. They're telling men that it's okay to be in sin. 
They're telling men that as long as you pay your tithes, as long as you pay your 10%, everything will be all right. But men and brethren, the scripture tells us also that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into my rest, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Men and brethren, this is the will of God for you in your life, that you abstain from sin. This is the will of God for young men, that they abstain from fornication, that they don't live that life of sin in their flesh, men and brethren. This is the will of God for you to live holy, to live righteous, to live godly in your flesh today, men and brethren. I hear 1 John telling us that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So if you say you're a Christian, if you say you have been fellowship with God, if you're calling yourself someone affiliated with God, men and brethren, you have to first depart from iniquity. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to give men power to do. In this you know, the scripture tells us, that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil, and that in him is no sin. So if you say you have a fellowship with God, and you walking in darkness, the scripture telling me you lying, and you don't know the truth, men and brothers. You can't say you know God and continue in sin. It's therefore Christ, the minister of sin. God, he can't abide with someone in sin, men and brother. But if you truly want to have faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the scripture tells us you have to deny yourself, deny that life of sin in your flesh, that lust of the eyes. Men can't be faithful to their wife. Young men sleeping around. Deny that fornication in your flesh, that cursing, that swearing. That smoking cigarettes, as I heard one minister before me saying, you have to deny that flesh in order to inherit God's kingdom, men and brethren. Brethren, these are the words of the Lord coming to you today, men and brethren. And if you can hear what thus saith the Lord, don't harden your heart. Because a lot of people on that last day, they're going to say, Lord, when did you send your preachers? But the Lord is going to say, I had my prophets out there preaching. I had them out there teaching. But you were too proud. You are too stubborn to hear what thus saith the Lord. Because, men and brethren, our life is not promised unto us. Whether we're young, whether we're old, our life is not promised unto us. And today could be our last day when we have to give an account for what we've done in our body. And if you're in sin, if you're still walking in the lust of your flesh, the Lord, he can't receive you. The Lord said, I'm angry with the wicked all the day long. I, there is no peace, my God, saith to the wicked. But if you work righteousness, if you work in this love of God in your body, where you keeping your body from sin, then the Lord can receive you into his everlasting kingdom, men and brother. This is the word of the Lord today, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We're church of the living God. We're here today in your street corner to preach the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We here today, men and brethren, as ambassadors of Christ, we here today, men and brethren, to show men how to live and how to live that life free from all sin. We here today, men and brethren, because there are so many false prophets in the world today, deceiving many. We're not here today, men and brethren, for your money, but we're here today that you might find that life and have that life with Christ in these last days. We're here today, men and brethren, to let men know that they don't have to be bound by the devil. They don't have to be bound by sin anymore. We're here today, men and brethren, to let the world know that it is possible to live a life free from sin. And as you've been hearing the testimony of the ministers today on the street corner, they all let you know that Christ is angry with sin. The Word of God says that God is angry with the sinner every day. And we tell you today, men and brethren, that unless you come out of your sins, you cannot see the Lord's face in peace. The Word of God says, This then is the message which you have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. And we tell you today, men and brethren, there are a lot of you saying that God is in you, that you're Christians, but you have the testimony that you're still in sin. We say it today, men and brethren, that God doesn't dwell in an unclean temple. And we tell you today, men and brethren, 
If you want God to be in your life today, you got to repent. The world is so deceived today. The world is so caught up in the things that they want to do. The world is so caught up in being all that it can be and trying to save their life in this world that they're turning their back on God today. But we tell you today, men and brethren, that this word of God says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. We tell you today, men and brethren, that there is only one way to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The false prophets like to say that all roads lead to God, that God is going to save everybody. But we tell you today, men and brethren, God is not saving you in your sins. We tell you today, men and brethren, at the sound of our voice, that you need to come and hear the word of God today. You need to be born again of the spirit and of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the only way you want to see the Lord's face in peace. We tell you today, men and brethren, don't be confused with the false prophets in the world today. The word of God says, be not deceived. There are many false prophets in the world today. And we're saying today, if you don't believe what we're saying, the word of God says, try the spirit to see whether we're of God. And we're telling you today, men and brethren, this is the true church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You don't see many churches in the world today. You don't hear churches preaching, living a life free from sin. All you hear churches saying is, Pay your tithes and God is going to forgive you. Put your hand on a TV. Uh, play with your rosary beads and God is going to forgive you. But we tell you today, men and brethren, that you have to have that true godly sorrow in these last days to repent of those sins and to never go back into sin again. And we tell you today, men and brethren, that it's possible in these last days. As the ministers was preaching unto you today, they were showing you what was the reason why Christ came and died on the cross? And that reason today, men and brethren, was to take us from sin. And we're saying today, there are a lot of people that are trying to say that God paid it all, that we can continue in sin, that we can commit all the sin that we want, and God paid it all. But we're saying today, men and brethren, that's not true. God didn't die so you can have a free credit card to keep committing sin. But God died that he might take that sin out of your life today. And we're saying today, men and brethren, there is no more excuse for being in sin. If you're still in sin today, men and brethren, that's because you love that sin and that you want to drink it down like water. But we tell you today, men and brethren, that God, he took away that excuse of sin in these last days. And we're telling you today, men and brethren, that there are ministers here on this street corner as a living example of how you can live a life free from sin. We tell you today, men and brethren, you have to walk just like Jesus walked if you're calling yourself a Christian. If you're calling yourself a Christian in these last days, you're saying that you're Christ-like. And we know that Christ didn't commit any sin. We know that Jesus walked a perfect life in these last days. We tell you today, men and brethren, that God, when he came down on the cross, he was a man just like me and you today. But he didn't commit any sin. And we're telling you today, men and brethren, that even in this day and age, even in this wicked world, that you can still live a life free from sin. That you can still have that same power from God to go obey and keep his commandments. We tell you today, men and brethren, the same God that created heaven and earth, the same God that came down and died on the cross, he can give you power to obey and keep his commandments. You don't have to be bound by sin and the devil anymore. You don't have to be subject to the lust of your flesh today in these last days. You can be faithful to one husband and one wife. You can keep your eyes in these last days. You don't have to run after the things that are in this world. But we say today, men and brethren, who have believed this report? We say today, men and brethren, who have faith in these last days to receive the word of God that's going forth? Who have faith to believe that God is light and in him is no darkness? Who have faith today to believe that you can cast down sin and the devil in these last days? We say today, men and brethren, come and hearken unto this word that we're preaching unto you today. Come and receive some grace from God that can change your life in these last days. No true word of God. And as all the ministers were saying before me, we are not here for any kind of money or any gain of the flesh, but we're trying to save your souls in these last days.
because so many in this world are deceived today to think that they can be saved in their um, sins. But we're saying today that you cannot be saved in your sins. You truly have to repent and truly be baptized of the water and of the spirit of Christ. Because in these last days, men and brethren, the false prophets, he liked to tell one that one can be saved in sin. That Christ, that he has done it all. But we're saying today, men and brothers, truly give us that power to truly live a life free from sin in our, in our bodies in these last days. We say today that Christ, when he came and died on, we came and died on the cross, he, he gave us a purpose, and that purpose was to truly glorify his name and do his will in our, in our bodies in these last days. We like to go to our first scripture coming from Romans. Chapter 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? So many deceived, so many people are deceived today to think that they are truly baptized of Christ. But we say today, men and brethren, that if one is still dwelling in sin, then one doesn't truly know the true baptism of of Jesus Christ. We say today that one has to not only be baptized of the um, water, but of the Spirit of Christ also. And those and all of those evil works of the flesh, it has to be truly done away with. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of his life. We say today, men and brethren, that we have to be that example here. We say Christ, when he has died, he has left us to truly walk in, to truly walk in his life. We say today that when one died, and if one is still abiding in sin, we say today that, that you will not see the Lord's face, that you will not see the Lord's face in peace. We say today that we truly have to walk as Christ in these last days if we want to truly inherit the kingdom of heaven. And we say that Christ, just as he was, just as he was without sin, we say that, saying today that if you are saying that you are of Christ, then you cannot be dwelling in sin also. It says, For if we have been planted together in the nightness of his death, we shall also walk in the newness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that that we also shall live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, and that he liveth, he live unto God. We say today, men and men and brethren, that Christ he has only died once to truly give us power to truly live that, that sinful life in these last days. And we can't take that for um for granted. We say today, men and brethren, we say today as you are hearing our words today we say one truly has to truly be able to have ears have ears to hear the word of God truly being spoke today because it can truly save one souls if the Lord has given one grace to hear it it says for in that he died he died to sin once but in that he lived he lived unto God likewise reckon ye also to yourself to be dead and deep unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our, through Jesus Christ our, our Lord let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you shall obey in the lust thereof. We say today, men and brethren, that if one is still abiding, if one is still abiding in sin, one can say that they one can say that they know that they know Christ, but we say today that if one is still abiding, if one is still abiding in sin, we say today then Satan is one master. We say today that you do not truly know Christ if you was uh, truly abiding in sin. We, we are saying today because Christ he has but Christ, He is holy, 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 and we have to be holy also, like Him. It says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as though that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under the grace. What then shall we sin? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not to whom you yield your servants to obey his servants you are to whom ye o to whom ye obey. We say today that one can say that they that they 
no price that Christ is one person who that Christ is one person who Christ is one person who Savior. But we say today that if one is still abiding in sin, we say today that one does not know Christ, yeah. and Christ does not know, and Christ does not know you. You say we say today that you, you truly have to repent and truly be baptized of the water and of the Spirit of Christ. It says, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the affirming of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members to unrighteousness and to iniquity, even so ye now yield your members to righteousness and to holiness. For when ye were servants unto sin, ye were free from righteousness. For few have ye then on those things whereof you are now ashamed, for the end of things death. But now being made free from sin, ye became servants to God. Ye you have your fruits unto holiness and the end ever, ever lasting, everlasting life. We say today, men and brethren, that at the end of this verse it says, For the wage of sin is for the wage of sin is is death. So we don't see why all of the false prophets is saying that we are all sinners saved, that we are all sinners saved by saved by grace. We say today that there is no such thing. We say today that unless you truly repent and truly and truly and truly depart from all sin, we say today that one cannot be saved. It says this, it says right here, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus through Jesus Christ our Lord. We say today that the, all, that the only way that one is truly going to be able to inherit God's kingdom is, is, is if one truly repent from all of the small works, uh, works of sin and don't go back to it again. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, Therefore there is no now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. We say today that the only way one can truly have peace in their minds and these last days is if one is truly keeping God's the one is truly keeping God's commands. But we say today that if one truly know within 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 themselves that one is not keeping God's commands man, then we say today that one truly truly should be afraid. Be one should truly be afraid because we or as we keep on labor to bring out Christ, he is not accepting a sinner. He is only accepting one is if one truly keeping his commandments and and his last days and departing from all sin. We like to go to <clears throat> our last scripture coming from out of St. Matthew's chapter 7. We say today that Christ's purpose when he died on when he had died on the um, cross was to truly give us that power to truly live that sin free, that sin free, um, that sin free um, life in his last days. It says, Be worth all prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or thigs or thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. If one is saying that they are of Christ, the one is all he going to bring forth fruits of, of righteousness. We say today that one cannot be dwelling, and one cannot be dwelling in sin. It says, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. We say today, God, He truly knows those that are His. We are saying today that that if you still that if you are still abiding in sin, we are saying today that Christ, He does not truly know that Christ, He does not know you, and you do not know Christ. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. We say today, men and brethren, that it doesn't matter how much good works that one tries, that one tries to do after one's after after one's flesh. We say today that if one is still, that if one is still abiding, if one is still abiding in sin, we say today that. That when one died, the one is just going to open up their eyes in hell. We say today that the only thing that is that is going to be separating you, that's going to be separating you from from God, is your sins. We say today that one truly has to repent and be baptized, not only of the water, but of the spirit of of the spirit of Christ, also putting off all of the works of sin. Amen. That's all the words we have for you today. At this time, we'd like to pray for another minister. That can get sin out of your life today. We're saying today, men and brethren, that God's spirit can do all things. But you got to have faith. 
to believe in him. You got to have faith in these last days to tell the devil you don't have to be in sin anymore. And we're saying today, men and brethren, this is not something that we're just talking about. This is not something that we're just trying to sound good on the street corner. But we're saying we have ministers here as a living example. We're saying, come, have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. Men and brethren, that concludes our street preaching ministry today. We're saying we hope that you was edified with the word of God that went forth today. We're saying today, men and brethren, that if you want to have fellowship with us, that we're Church of the Living God, and our address is 3015 54th Street South on Causeway, Tampa, Florida, 33619. We have services at 10 o'clock a.m., and we have services on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We're saying today, men and brethren, that today when you hear the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, heart and not your hearts, and examine yourself for the Word of God today. Amen.